Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to be discussing the branches of the internal pudendal artery. But before we go any further, just in case you haven't been watching this series of videos, I think it's important to understand where we are in the grand scheme of things. So let's backtrack a couple of videos. So here's our abdominal aorta. This was a video where we talked about all the branches that come off of there. And so here's our abdominal aorta descending downward, and it bifurcates into two major branches. This one over here would be the patient's right common iliac artery. This one over here is the patient's left common iliac artery. So if we follow that common iliac artery down, as we see right here, it itself branches or bifurcates into two branches. This one over here is the external iliac artery. Uh, this one, as it continues downward, it'll give off several branches, but it'll pass under the inguinal ligament and become the femoral artery as it travels down the thigh. This one, the internal iliac artery, stays within the pelvic region, and it's going to give off a ton of branches to structures in the pelvis, with a few exceptions like the obturator artery, which goes down uh, into the thigh. But the internal iliac artery gives off two divisions. There's a posterior division, and there's an anterior division. And the anterior division is all of this right here, this entire curve. This is all the anterior division of the internal iliac artery right here. Just follow my mouse. And we can see here that the anterior division gives off several branches. It gives off an umbilical artery right here. Right here it gives off an obturator artery. Then it gives off some sexually dimorphic arteries like the inferior vesicular artery in males or the vaginal artery in females, a uterine artery right here, and then a middle rectal artery. Here's an inferior gluteal artery. But as it continues on, it simply changes names or becomes the internal pudendal artery. So the internal pudendal artery is really the terminal branch of the anterior division of the internal iliac artery. Okay? Um, it's not a true branch because it's not like coming off of it. It really just changes names. It becomes the internal pudendal artery. And this artery in general supplies structures near the perineum and it also runs with the pudendal nerve in the perineum. And recall the pudendal nerve actually comes off of the sacral plexus. We'll actually talk more about that pudendal nerve probably in the next video. So we've still got our internal pudendal artery here. Again, this picture is more or less just transposed. We've got the internal iliac arteries anterior division, gives off all these branches, and then it becomes the internal pudendal artery. Now the reason I have it drawn twice here is because like the anterior division of the internal iliac artery, the internal pudendal artery exhibits a large amount of sexual dimorphism, meaning that the arteries that come off change depending on whether or not we're looking at a male or female internal pudendal artery. Now, regardless of which gender we're looking at, the first two branches are the same. Okay, this is not sexual dimorphism. And these two arteries are the inferior rectal artery and the perineal artery. Notice we have both of these in males and females. If we're looking at the inferior rectal artery, this is really just supplying the distal or lower part of the rectum. And we've actually seen some other structures here. Uh, for example, we've seen the middle rectal artery, which supplies the middle rectum. That branches off of the anterior division before it becomes the internal pudendal. And the superior rectal, we've also seen before. We didn't name it as such, but it actually comes off of the inferior mesenteric artery. And this would actually be the superior rectal artery that supplies the upper or proximal part of the rectum. And then we have the perineal artery, which really just supplies structures close to the perineum. And by definition, the perineum is really just the area between, in males, the base of the scrotum and the anus. And in females, it's between basically the vagina and the anus. Okay? So those two structures, they're the same. But after that, we do have significant dimorphism. So in males, the next branch that comes off is the posterior scrotal artery. This supplies the scrotum. And obviously, only males have scrotums. So in females, we have a labial artery, a posterior labial artery. This artery supplies the labia majora and labia minora. And that's interesting because the scrotum in males, its sexual homologue in females are those labia, majora and minora. Okay, so that's the third branch. The fourth branch 
right here in males is really two arteries. I've just shown it as one. And those are the deep artery of the penis and the dorsal artery of the penis. Those are actually two separate arteries. I've kind of just shown them as one here. But those supply, in general, the penis. But in females, we don't have that structure. We have a clitoris. So in females, it actually gets one extra artery. So right here, we have just the general clitoral artery. And then we also have two arteries right here. One of them is the deep artery of the clitoris. And the second one is the dorsal artery of the clitoris. Now, overall, this concept really isn't too tough. I mean, if you have to memorize these, you have to memorize these. But really, the major thing I wanted to indicate with this video is to show you that especially in this anterior division of the internal iliac artery and as it continues into the internal pudendal artery notice we have a huge amount of sexual dimorphism you can actually see that over here as well like this branch right here this is the inferior vesicular artery in males which is supplying structures like seminal vesicles which is where you get the term vesicular seminal vesicles things like that that we only find in males or obviously in females they don't have those. They have a vagina, which you don't find in males. So there is a sexual dimorphism right there. Additionally, a uterine artery, males don't have a uterus. So this is something that we would only have in females. And over here, a superior vesicular artery or a deferent artery, males. I didn't indicate that there, but only males have a vas deferens or also called a ductus deferens which is a pathway for sperm to go from the epididymis and to combine with seminal vesicle secretions and form sperm. So again, there's a lot of sexual anatomy here, but the major thing to notice is that we do have a lot of dimorphism here. But also, hopefully this gave you a good understanding of these branches that come off of the internal pudendal artery. So please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.